Jewel back with ya. So I thought I would respond to a video request that I get pretty frequently about what are some of the qualities to look for in a good astrologer or what uh, makes for a good astrologer. So this is uh, just some thoughts that I put together um, about that. So the first thing I would say is training. You, they need to be well educated, not just in astrology. An astrologer, astrologer needs to be familiar with mythology, numerology, psychology, human development, astronomy. It is a profession that's going to require a consilient thinker and somebody who's going to have been exposed to a diverse amount of information. A really good astrologers have the equivalent of several degrees. They are very often self-educated. They'll have a basis of education, but they'll add to and add to it and add to it. Uh, the best astrologers out there are extremely well-read and educated in many different areas because astrology really draws from a lot of different fields. And so you want to have a well-rounded, um, diverse education when it comes to understanding the, uh, the concepts that astrology actually comes from and ties into. So it's really important to be not just educated with astrology, but in the fields surrounding astrology. Very, very important. It's not uncommon for astrologers to start reading charts after just like six months of reading books about astrology. There is no regulation in most states regarding astrology or who can call themselves a professional astrologer or charge money from astrology. In a few states there are. Um, but mostly it's totally open for anyone to call themselves an astrologer and then charge money with any level of experience. So you need to look for an astrologer that has a actual education that has been practicing for a while, that has some experience behind them. And uh, if uh, you're not going to educate yourself as an astrologer, then pay somebody to educate you. Another thing I would say is look for their uh, articles or body of written work. Do their writings seem to be coherent? Do they hold water? Are their writings coming from a specific belief system? Know that that belief system will inform all that they tell you. You will get a Christian point of view from a Christian astrologer. You will get a pagan point of view from a pagan astrologer. So understand that astrologers' interpretations, unless they have achieved a place of objectivity, are going to depend on how they identify themselves. Another thing to understand about astrologers is that many astrologers are mentally ill. Astrologers suffer from a god complex much of the time. They see themselves as the source of all information and enjoy the identity that it creates for them. It's an ego boost to know everything. They feel that they are above you in some way because they have the answers. That's not all astrologers. That's just very, very common for less evolved astrologers. Um, be very careful who you absorb your information from. They can be passing on their illness to you and it's very, very common for astrologers to declare things with no research behind it. 
they have this uh, frequent idea that their intuition is the source of truth and it's frequently not going to be a clear intuition because it's informed by a God complex. So I do a lot of cleanup work from other astrologers who have told people things that are so far from reality or the truth that it's actually damaging to the client. Astrologers need to address their personal issues and their personality quirks before they start reading charts. Projection of one's issues onto a client can happen with both astrologers and counselors. So get to the bottom of yourself before you attempt to get to the bottom of anyone else. Astrologers need to be trained in counseling or at least coaching. Astrology is counseling. If you don't want to be a counselor, then don't become an astrologer. You will be helping people to make value decisions on their lives and you had better be aware of how impactful your words and actions are on a client. You are having a direct effect on people's impressions and feelings about themselves and the world and about others and you had better be aware of how to handle people's questions and emotions that may come up during the course of a session. Most astrologers have no knowledge of counseling, no experience with it, and not a shred of training when it comes to counseling. Another thing I would say is, is the amount of money that they're charging in line with their experience or knowledge. It should be. Very successful astrologers with a good track record are going to charge more because they're worth it and because they often have a long waiting list and they have to take measures to pare down the amount of people that are making appointments. Less um, experienced astrologers or sometimes less knowledgeable astrologers should be charging you in accordance to their experience. Um, their prices really need to be in tune with what they're going to be able to offer you. A big one when it comes to looking for a good astrologer is considering are they ethical? How do they appear to live their personal lives? Is it full of darkness and suspicion? Is it disconnected or lonely? Do they seem happy in their life? Um, do they seem like they are living a life that's balanced or reflects honesty with themselves? This profession requires a high degree of ethics. And because astrologers hold an enormous amount of power, often what an astrologer says is going to be taken far more seriously than what, say, a counselor or a psychiatrist or a doctor might impart to them. You had better make sure as an astrologer that you are operating humbly. You need to take seriously the potential effects that you can have on people. You are potentially responsible for a tremendous amount of another person's hope and sadness. So take it seriously. Another thing to look for is, is the astrologer that you're looking at an astrologer that slams other astrologers or tries to take them down? Have you ever seen a counselor or a psychotherapist try to destroy another psychotherapist? It really is unheard of. And it would be extremely off-putting to potential clients if they behaved that way. 
it would show their insecurity as a therapist. But you see it among astrologers all the time. It is rampant behavior. Astrologers try to destroy each other very commonly. There's many, many videos on YouTube that have one astrologer, tr astrologer trying to dismantle the reputation or the knowledge of another astrologer. This is a huge red flag. You are dealing with an astrologer who is struggling with their personal jealousy and insecurity when they behave this way. They are telling you that they don't feel secure in their own knowledge or in their own experience. And this is a highly unprofessional way to run a business and should make you wonder why someone feels the need to take someone else down. Why are they even triggered by what the other astrologer did or said? Unhealthy astrologers are very, very jealous of each other. This signals unfinished personal work, usually a lot of shadow work that needs to be done. So be sure that you are seeing an astrologer who doesn't feel the need to elevate themselves through tearing other astrologers down. It's also a good idea to know what other people's experiences have been with the astrolog astrologer that you're thinking of choosing. Read the reviews on their websites um, and on their Facebook pages. Are there reviews? And if there aren't reviews, then you might want to wonder why. So I just want to point out again that there is no ethics board in astrology. No one regulates who can be an astrologer or what kind of training or experience they have. This allows anyone to have influence over the values and decisions of another person's life in the role of an astrologer. So be very careful. Read their published articles. Try to get a glimpse of what their personal life and personal struggles might be like. Ask about their amount of experience. Inquire about their training. And if you can um, you know, pay attention to some of these things, then it puts you in a good position to be able to find a really competent, uh, responsible, ethical astrologer because there's really good ones out there. There are some incredible astrologers out there with just the most amazing um, perspective. So um, I encourage you to just be careful and be smart and don't be fooled by astrologers that offer you the world. Don't be fooled by astrologers that give you a path to escape or transcend your life because that's playing into telling you what you want to hear. And that's something that um, won't really help you. Not really. It may make you feel better in the short term, but it isn't really going to help you. So find an astrologer that's not going to f feed you a fish. They're going to teach you how to fish. So that's just some of my thoughts. You can find me on the internet at truthandaspectastrology.com, Facebook, Instagram at Truth and Aspect Astrology. And yes, I do private consultation. I'm mainly a relationship and intimacy astrologer, but I interpret all types of charts. And I'll be back soon.